Let's continue our blast from the past series and the next one in line in a chronological order is the mighty 690 GTX, another dual GPU monster and yeah, let's see how it performs. This thing came out in May of 2012. It's built on the 28 nanometer process and spec-wise it basically combines two full GTX 680 chips with only a small down clock for the core and boost. It's rated for 300 watts of TD, which is a great improvement over its predecessor, the GTX 590, which had over 365 watts and a third of the CUDA cores per GPU. It cost a grand back then and in a way it prepared the territory for the Titan tax but at least in my opinion it has a sexy new design with premium materials and the cooling itself, as you will see it can handle it in a quiet fashion. So I paired it with my new Ryzen platform around the AMD 1700 CPU plus 16 gigs of DDR4 300 MHz RAM, I think we are covered. Now, without any further ado, you know the drill by now, let's jump right in with the testing and games. First up is a run in the new superposition benchmark with settings at medium for full HD of course. We get as an average of 38 FPS and even better the minimum value of 31 frames per second is achieved. Valley is next with everything cranked to the maximum quality settings and we get over 55 FPS as an average value. Being a dual GPU card there's always gonna be dips in the minimum FPS and surprisingly this didn't happen so abruptly in the superposition one. In Battlefield 1 with everything on Ultra despite the fact that only one GPU is working we still get 30 FPS which is great and you can still enjoy the game. The situation changes completely in Battlefield 4 where we have almost full scalability and we see almost over always 95% GPU usage on both of them and thus we get over 60 FPS with no major drops. Weirdly enough things fluctuate all over the place in Bioshock Infinite which we know from the past it is a highly optimized game. But this time we fluctuate so much that the game can be enjoyed. Call of Duty World War 2 works surprisingly well on just one GPU, even on high quality settings and gets us a very smooth gaming experience. Crisis 3 will use anything you throw at it, so it is very well optimized even for a multi-GPU configuration. And as you can see we get a lot of FPS even at max quality settings and almost full dual GPU usage. Doom overall is a very well optimized game and even with a dual GPU card it seems that it works really well. So we have over 80% total GPU usage most of the time and thus a very smooth gaming experience is achieved. In Far Cry New Dawn we noticed a lot of fluctuation in the FPS numbers, so despite the fact that in some scenarios both GPUs are running at full chat, it's still not enough to compensate to have an overall fluid experience. Max Payne 3 runs exceptionally well and it is a very well optimized game as we know from the past even with dual GPU cards. We have high FPS numbers and again we see the VRAM as a combined value in the menu settings. Metro Exodus is by far one of the most demanding titles out there, I mean it will make my GTX 1060 run out of breath at max settings without the RTX special effects of course. So not even at medium quality settings, in a benchmark run we get nowhere near 30 FPS for the GTX 690. Rise of the Tomb Raider offers us an identical situation as we saw in Far Cry New Dawn, where we got really good numbers in the beginning of the benchmark, but as we progressed the performance fluctuated a lot. Now let's try the first Tomb Raider of the reboot series. Here we have perfect scalability and fluidity, nothing to complain. Finally Geralt closes our testing session for today, with everything on max we still get over 30 FPS. 
but mind you there are some stuttering effects here and there. So there you have it guys, like I said in the beginning of the video, hope you noticed that the stock fan is enough to keep the card cool under 80 degrees no matter what on full GPU usage on both of them. I mean in most of my tests I don't think I saw over 75 degrees per GPU. Noise wise it is a silent card at least if you can find one in a decent shape like mine. Overall it performs really good and takes things even further from the GTX 590, being more efficient, quieter and pumping out better FPS numbers. Mind you, this is only true only when there is driver optimization for dual GPU cards from the developers. To conclude, this is still a powerful card and if you can get one, give it a shot, at least to have one in your collection like I do. Speaking of, stay tuned, my next video with these GPUs will be very interesting. Until next time, thank you for watching, Alex out.